guys, this is Alison Pryor, and remember I told you I had 10 ways to start a painting like a pro? Well, I promised that I was going to do a painting based on those um, that video that I did on 10 ways. So I thought this might be a good example. This is a painting that I did, and um, you can look at as as you can look at photographs or paintings, you can look at those steps and then you can start your painting like the pros do, of course. So have a look at this painting that I did and I'm going to show you, we'll go through the steps that I already mentioned and then we're going to actually paint this again and go through those steps again and that way you'll be able to see how the whole system works. So all you need for this painting of the landscape that we're going to do is just some ultramarine blue if you have it and cad yellow had red, sap green, and burnt umber, and white. So, and maybe a bit of black if you need it, but um, I'm just going to leave it off for now. And that's the colors that you normally use. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, and whatever greens you have, yellows and blues and red, because I don't want you to have to not do the painting if you don't have these exact colors, but they're the most popular colors. And um, Tantanium white is also a nice white. Now I think we should straighten up our path. Maybe we'll work on our path for a few minutes. Um, so let's see, the path is going a little bit away from the house, so I want to bring it closer to going around the back of the house. Cabin. Whatever you want to call it. So let's take this here and bring it around the back instead of back there and we'll put some grass back there. So let's put this going behind and move it down this way. And so we'll have our path this way instead of going up there. I don't like that. So make all kinds of changes. Good. So we'll just go up behind as if it's going behind. See how much better that looks already? Now let's do another coat on our path, just to get it straightened up. Just go back and forth, horizontal. Alright, good. Back and forth, horizontal. Right into the grass if you want. And back and forth. So the colors I used for that was red, and a bit of blue, and some brown. Got a little bit darker this time. Back and forth, horizontal strokes, don't forget. So we can get the feel of the path, horizontal. Don't be tempted to move around the path, follow the path, because you'll only get, uh, you'll only end up making it look like it's odd looking or off. Okay, okay. A little more red if you want, but we're not really concerned with too much yet, but uh, a little bit of a darker color so we can use some shadows from that. Okay. Back and forth. Horizontal. Horizontal. Good. So right down to the bottom. Horizontal. I have to keep saying it because sometimes you, you're going to end up going with the path, right? Going with the, it looks like it's, but the, the more you go horizontal, the more you'll keep it straight. All right, good. Add a little bit of white to that mixture that I just made. And I'm going to... Let's see, I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to the center. So let's highlight that by adding more white to that mixture. I'm just going to get a pinkish color there. And if you want to get a peach color, add a bit of yellow. Let me show you what I'm doing here now. 
So I added some blue and I added some red and some brown and white. And then I add some yellow. So all those colors go together and now they don't have to be exactly like this, okay? Don't worry too much. That's too peachy for me. I'm gonna add more red. Now if here's another thing. If you do this and you don't like it anymore, clean off your brush and start a new a new batch, okay? So let's start a new batch because I don't like that. But I wanted to show it to you anyway. So <clears throat> blue and red. Blue and red. More red and white. That nice color we're getting there now. Yeah, it's more on the purplish pinkish color side. It's a bit bright. There we go. And then we can add a batch over here. So we're getting a batch. We need to probably get a lighter batch. Just move around your palette and make a few little different mixtures of. Instead of making one big puddle, you keep making a bigger puddle, bigger, bigger, bigger. Instead of doing that, just go around different areas and you have different values of color then. Okay, so let's try this one here. And let's make, let's take the edge of the path and pull it in from, wipe it off, you know, if you get too much. Pull it in from the left side of the path. Horizontal, okay, horizontal. Horizontal, there we go. Good. See, if you stay horizontal, it makes a little more sense. Okay. I find that the path sometimes takes longest because you have so many times you gotta go back and forth to get the right colors and get it the way you want it. So we'll, we'll do that. Keep that going. So go back over it again, but this time don't reload. Just while the paint is wet, just pull in what you just did. Pull it in further. Pull it in closer to the center, okay? Horizontal. Bring it in closer to the center. What you already did. Good. Keep going. Good. All right. We got it. Now this is a part where you may want to use blending gel because that started to dry on me there. So I don't use, like I said, not very often. You don't really need to use blending gel on this because you need it to dry fast. But anything that you'd like to work with for a longer period of time with your acrylics and they dry too fast, then you can add blending gel. And I think the path will be a good place for that. There are a couple of ways you can use your blending gel. You can either put it on your brush and then you can put it in your paint that you're going to use and that will extend the drying time, okay? Or you can put the blending gel on your dry canvas first and then work that way. So either way works. So I'm just going to put a bit on my brush and with my paint, okay? And then I'm going to go back over this again to brighten up the edge again. Alright, good, that's fine. So the blending gel can be on your brush with your paint or totally on your dry path and then you can work with it. So either way works and then you can take your paint and go back in, back and forth horizontal. Okay, there we go. Good. Over and over and over. So I'm just putting a little extra on that edge here because it's kind of dark. And I'm just pulling it in, pulling it in, pulling it in towards the center. And that brightens it up even more. Now that we have blending gel on our brush, we should be able to go back and smooth that out and bring it to the middle even more. All right, I got some more blending gel on there. And I'm going to go back over it again. It makes the paint smoother too, so you can, it will, see how it's moving it much better? Let me see if I pull my brush this way. 
no I think I'll so keep your brush uh, like this okay not like that when you're pulling over pulling over like this because it gives you those nice streaks now I'm not fond of using blending gels and stuff because I want my paint to dry uh, so I can dry brush over the dry paint but in some cases it's good to be able to keep the dry the paint uh, moist for a while um, so sometimes it works so, you know, you'd have to make that judgment yourself because uh, you can look at all the videos you want and they'll tell you you know you can use it for this and that and then you have to try it everything that you're learning on these videos you have to try all this yourself and make your own decisions because what what we say is what works for us and what we think might work for you but it may not so make sure you experiment and have some fun Let's see now how you're getting more shadows and shading in your path see now we'll work on the other side and come towards come towards that we can still add more highlights like I say now don't forget we're going to be adding all the small details and highlights very last right now we're just getting everything in place and now we'll do the other side for shadows and what we'll do is we'll take a darker color so we'll take blue and brown make a really nice dark color and some red kind of purple it up a little bit to match what we already got done all right nice and dark a little more brown like I say you have to judge it yourself you don't want too dark and you want it too blue either so I'm trying to get on the a little bit on the brown side add a little more brown okay let's see what that does now let's start probably up on the top like I said I'm left handed so I might be starting in an opposite way that you might want to start and start at the very edge and pull in these little lines horizontal horizontal pull them in now if you want to use some blending gel you can you can certainly use a little bit of blending gel just to keep it from drying out too fast because we want to go back over that and smooth it in to the center also okay so we got some of these shadows going on sometimes blending gel will make it transparent so we might need to get more paint and there we go good as long as you're horizontal you'll be safe now see I'm finding the blending gel is making it a little bit transparent maybe I added too much to my brush so you add too much just go back and wipe it off okay that's nice and dark on that side now I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit and I'm going to move that back in closer to the middle so I'm just going to bring that in a little bit just I'm sort of flicking at it you know Hopefully that stayed, even the blending gel didn't keep it. You know what, uh, we could try something else here. If you don't like using blending gel, you can always mist, mist your paint. And that will help, there we go, start to move there now. So sometimes you have to... Uh, figure things out see what will work but either blending gel or water will work the water will dry faster than the blending gel but uh, you can always keep misting you'd want to mist it to the point where it's too wet though all right oh, that don't look too bad it's not too bad all right Now we'll add a few little highlights just to get them started and then we'll add more later. So right now just get your lightest color that you were using before and add a little bit of white to it, okay? And I won't be mentioning uh, blending gel too much. You decide yourself if you want to add blending gel to your paint, okay? So I'm just going to add more white. 
brighten that up. And I'm just going to lay that. I'm still using my chiseled edge synthetic brush. And I'm just going to lay that in the center a little bit. Just a little bit of here and there. Okay, just enough to get us started. We'll, we'll do the final highlights later. Right now I just want to get and just the same streaks horizontal and keep going and I'm missing a few spots because I don't want to lose my underpainting alright this might be a good spot to use blending gel too okay horizontal kinda of missing some of these uh, missing some of the underpainting so it will come come through okay can you see that okay if it needs a little more go ahead I'm going to spray it you can use your blending gel if you like I'm get that to move a little bit all right hopefully I didn't put too much on there <laughs> Okay, we're going back over. As long as you're horizontal. Back, look, see what I'm see what my hand is doing. Back and forth. Like I said, I'm left handed, so this could be like really opposite for you guys, for some of you. Alright, so we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm gonna move it into the dark a little bit. Like I said, this is a back and forth um, technique until you get it the way you want it. You know, it'd be nice if we just throw it on and it worked perfect. I, I, and probably would for some artists, but um, some of us, it takes a little bit longer. And we want to, uh, here we go, and That'll be it for now. That'll be it for now. We'll come back and straighten all that up after. But it's starting to look good. We got some shadows going on there, and we got to put the, the path in there and the little lines. We can make the path going up to the house now too. See those little tracks? We can make those. So now, why don't we make the little path going up to the door. So it looks like the path is coming probably down here. and in. So let's make some color so we can see what we're doing. So make a nice color. Uh, we use basically the same colors that you used for the center path. And that was blue, a bit of red, a bit of white. Maybe a bit of yellow, maybe a bit of brown. Just, just put all those colors together and see what happens. Okay, so there's a little path coming off the door. There it is. It's coming down, 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 down. Just fill that in. Good. Yes, we got to get up to the cabin somehow now, don't we? Up to the cabin. Yep. All right, we got that much done. See? One bit at a time. <laughs> 